Welcome, YouTube fam, to my attic. We are gathered here today in the site of this HVAC system to uh, admire it. I just spent over $7,000 on this brand new HVAC system. Plus it's condenser friend that sits outside and I'm not gonna spend that kind of money on something and not show it off to the masses. He doesn't get to sit up here and do nothing. Hmm, it's a nice unit, isn't it? Very, very gray. Um, oh, look, I got some new wiring right here. That's cool, got a new pan, drip pan. Oh, check this out here. Got some plumbing parts that I don't know exactly what they do, but they're all brand new. Got some new piping here. Yes, yes, this is, this is very nice. So what are you up to today? Well, that was good. I guess it is time for us to head out to the water. We spent sufficient time with our new unit. Next time, you guys will get to meet the matching condenser that goes along with it. So long, buddy. Same time tomorrow. I will see you guys out on the water. All right, welcome back to the water, you phalanges. We are in this little river tributary that dumps in to the main body of the water, of the lake, I should say, hoping to score some big, spring, I guess late springtime catfish here in the south. We're sitting in this nice little channel. Looks like it's about 22 feet deep. Oh, look at that. Look at that right there. Can you see that? There's something hanging out down there. We'll decide here in just a bit if that is gore or if that's our catfish that we're after. We have a couple different types of bait we're going to be working with today. We got your regular herring and I also picked up a little baggie of shad. Dude had like five inch shad. Oh, look at that. Cool. We'll give both of these a try. Each is a little bit different. I like how fat that shad is, but we'll try them each. A little bit of breeze is picked up here out on the lake, but no matter. I'm gonna just take a big old chunk out of that shad just like that. Then we're gonna butterfly this herring out right here. There we go. One and two. Let's grab our Drift King Fusion catfish rods. Whoa, try not to fall off the boat. Got a Santee Cooper rig on this one. I think I got half of them rigged up with Santee Cooper rigs. The other half are just straight up on the bottom. So we'll see if there's a preference from these fish or not. Looks pretty good right there. Look at that. For our first line. Loosen that drag. Oh, right there. That's all you need. Right down in that channel. Tighten it up, loosen it. Ooh, that's that clicking sound where we're gonna hopefully be hearing a lot today. Get that big old shad head on that. Look at that. Hopefully that calls up a piggy. I'm gonna throw this shad head kind of right on the outside of the channel. That's probably gonna be at about nine, 10 feet right there. All right, so we got two lines out this side. We got two lines out over here, thoroughly covering the back of this channel that we're currently sitting right in and kind of the sides of the channel as well. So we've got shad, herring, shad, herring. So we've alternated between, oh, there's a hit right there. Look at that, that just got bit. I was gonna say, we just alternated between both rods. No, that wasn't anything. Oh dude, bait's gone. It's nothing but the head. Nothing but the head, got a rebate already. Shoo. Might have been a turtle with the head only on. I don't know. But a little bit of action either way. Hopefully we'll get some rods to pop in here soon with some catfish. Good 
got him? There's a fish. Fish on. Woo! That didn't take long. That's on that cut. Um, shad. It's on that shad in shallower water. Oh! Shoot! Just We're getting hit over there, too. Dang it. Too much action. She's right under the boat. Right under the boat. I'm on, where are we at? It definitely feels like a catfish. The way it's rolling. Not a bad fish. To start the day, I'm thinking, where are you at? Miss Piggy. Oh yeah, that's, that's a good blue catfish. Look at that. Woo, that's a really good blue catfish. Dang, son. Dang, son. Come here, right up this way. That's a really solid fish. Yes, nice. Nice, that's a good way to start. How's that rod doing over there? Dude, I think there's something that might be on that one too. Good grief. I'll set that there. Grab this one. Is he on there? I'm gonna try swinging. Did I get him? Dude, I think we got something on here. I think we got something. It ain't very big, but I think there's something on there. This is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of catfishing I like. Honestly, this is the kind of catfishing you should have too. Oh, look, a baby blue. A baby blue. Ha! But this is the kind of catfishing that should be going on. If the catfish are biting and uh, you got four lines out, you should be getting this kind of action right here. <laughs> there you go. A little bit of a size difference there. We're gonna go ahead and throw that one back. It's just a little small. But that guy right there, that's a real nice catfish. We're gonna weigh that up. I'm curious to see. I'm gonna say it's like eight, nine pounds would be my guess. I think that one might go on the ice. That's a really, really pretty blue catfish. Dudes, I am good at this. I am good at 9.01 pounds. Dad gum. <laughs> you know, when you've been fishing as long as I have, basically for what, about 25 years now, you get pretty good at just like eyeballing size of a fish. That's definitely going on the ice. Good start to the day. Good start to the day. Go ahead and break these ice bags open. Sweet. Let's get some more bait out there. Mm. All right, so interesting though, both of those fish actually came on the outside rods, the lines that are sitting right on the outside of the channel that we're currently anchored up in. I'll we'll have to keep an eye on that because if that continues, what we might do is actually move off out of this channel. There's a flat right to the left of us, right out here, uh, that gets maybe about between 10 and 14 feet deep. Sit out there. Oh, look at that. That's that, that just got hit. That's that lot, same line again that we just caught the little catfish on, but again, it's sitting on the outside of the channel. What might be happening is, is the catfish might be spawning, which that means they're not gonna be sitting necessarily deep in this channel. They're gonna be out on the flats looking for places to spawn. So while normal catfish logic would want you to be fishing in a channel, when those catfish are spawning, they're not gonna be sitting there, they're gonna be up shallow. We might be fishing too deep. We'll see. Look at this, getting a bite, getting a bite. Outside rod again. He's on there. Got him. Got him. Another fish outside of the channel. It's gonna be three for three. Not a bad fish either. Feels like an eater. Feels like an eater. Not any world breaker. No, no personal best breaker would be my guess. I gotta beat 33 pounds, but oh yeah, that's a solid cat. That's a real solid blue catfish. Yeah, that's awesome. That's probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe six, seven pounds. That's a good fish. That's a really good fish. On that Santee rig and on the outside of the channel, once again, uh, that's an eater. That's an eater. <laughs> cool. Dude, did my line just break? Oh, no, no, I got that clear. Woohoo! What a tubby. What a tub. You go on ice too. Sweet. Right down there. 
Awesome. Those aren't gonna sit down there for too much longer. We're gonna get those cleaned up here soon because I've got an awesome recipe we're gonna try today. And I need those to marinate a little bit for me this afternoon. Holy cow. That was a hit. Got him. Got him. Fish on. This one's actually in the channel. This is the first one in the channel. What do we got? That's got some good weight to it. Feels like it anyway. Oh yeah, it's a nice blue. It's a nice kitty. Real nice kitty. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a pretty fish. You know, I might just let this one go for now. Already got two in the cooler. I think I could keep up to three, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, well, whew, that splashed. Ooh, that was a little chilly. There we go. All right, while we are sitting here, just watching lines, sitting out on our flat still, we're gonna go ahead and get one of these bad boys cleaned up because I want to soak this in some beer for a couple of hours before we cook it up so we can try a nice beer battered catfish. It's a real nice getting in on a good catfish bite. It's been a while since I've had a really decent catfish bite. It's been kind of a slow spring. Summer's been slow and coming on. So it's just been kind of difficult getting these fish to cooperate. But today, man, no problem. They're eating, they're out and about. Check that out right there. Look at that. Woo, that's a good catfish fillet. So I thought that was like um, a three fish limit here in South Carolina. You could actually keep up to 25 catfish, blue catfish per day. Um, you can only keep though, I think it's two, two or three over 32 inches long. None of these are, are that big. I don't know where I got the idea that you can only keep three. Maybe that's for like tournament fish. I think in tournaments, if you like tournament catfishing, you can only have like three in the boat or something like that per person. I don't remember. All right, so we've got a couple of nice catfish fillets here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them in strips like this, kind of bigger strips. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to marinate this in some beer. I've got a Guinness Stout and it's a nice dark beer, which from my understanding is what you want. We're gonna take all our meat and we're just gonna put it right in the Ziploc bag. All I have are Ziploc bags. Probably work better if I had, uh, I don't know, something like that you put leftovers in, maybe that it has a lid on it, but this is all we got. So we're gonna, ooh, pop that open. This is nice and chilled. I feel like we have to take a test drink here. Mm, nice rich flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that right in over all that catfish, just like that. Then we're gonna seal that bag up. We're just gonna let that sit just like that. We're gonna put that back in our cooler, let that marinate like that for probably, I don't know, the next hour and a half or so, maybe two hours, depending on how the fishing's going. And we'll keep that nice and chilled right down here. This, oh, I think in the meantime, we'll get some more sweet tea and lemonade going. I'm definitely getting bit right here. Don't know what it is. Got him. I think. I think I got that one. Yeah, we got him. That time he took off with it. Dude, the way this thing's running, I wonder if this is a gar. Nah, eh, maybe not. Gotcha, you little porker. What do we got? Oh, nice blue. Dude, that's a really nice blue. It's like four pound. I don't want to keep that. It's like the size you want for eating right there. Right on this flat, y'all. Just moved up and not five minutes in. Nice blue on the flat. There we go. Pop right out on that Santee rig. Beautiful, beautiful cat. Man, we are just absolutely dominating the day so far. This is a good catfish bite. This is getting hit over here too. Look at that, look at that. Got him. 
another one. Good grief, dudes. You know, one of the things I talk about a lot, um, when you're fishing, especially like this, I got four rods out. If you're in a good catfish spot where the fish are at, you're gonna know pretty quickly. Like, it's, it's, you're not gonna have to sit and wait two, three hours for the fish to start biting. Like, you'll know within 20 minutes, 30 minutes, especially with this many lines out. Little blue. So if you're not getting fish within, say, 30 minutes, especially with this many lines out, I, I usually, when I'm sitting, I give it 30, 45 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, um, then I move. Because these catfish, they're, they're, uh, they're a game fish, just like any other fish, like a bass or a walleye or anything. Where are my pliers? Uh, and they're hunting. You know, when they're, when they're feeding, they're hunting as well. Uh, especially fishing this time of year, late spring. So there's no sense, you know, you wouldn't sit and fish a bass spot if you weren't catching anything for, you know, two hours. You'd move. Same thing with catfish. If you don't get anything after 30, 45 minutes, especially like this, four lines out. I mean, four lines, especially in a river that's maybe, I don't know, 200 yards across. Like, you ought to find fish ASA and P's. So, in this instance, two catfish in the first, I mean, seven, eight minutes of rolling up to this flat. That tells me we could sit here for a while, catch more if we want. All right. Check this out, y'all. Just moved to a different spot, and I'm going to try some big chunks of blue catfish. I have never tried catfish for catfish. I know a lot of guys say that you can use like the baby catfish to catch other catfish, but we're just gonna use big old chunks of blue catfish because obviously the cut bait is working, right? But we're going to experiment a little bit. Let's see if we can get anything on some blue cat. I like this too, cause it's like bigger chunks of meat than like that small herring I'm throwing out. And we've rigged up all rods. So all rods have blue catfish on them. So let's see if we catch anything. Wish us. All right, while we are waiting for our catfish to bite, hopefully, we'll see. All I've had are a couple of gar bites on the big chunks of blue catfish. We're gonna get our potatoes ready for the oil. I'm making me some hand cut fry for our fish basket. Oh, there's a bite. That one right there, we'll see. He comes back for it. No, oh, I see that. You see that bite right there? Come on. Gonna have to hit it harder than that to get me to stop cooking up fries here. Oh my gosh, good grief. I don't know, that might be a gar. No, 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 no. Holy cow. That might not be a gar. Good grief. Jeez Louise. Oh my gosh. Do you see that hit? Dudes, that thing pilfered it. Just absolutely nailed it. This is on, this is on the, uh, the catfish. Oh, now it's coming this way. I haven't felt that telltale catfish roll yet. Good knit. Dude just hammered it, laid the beat down on it. Ooh, that, that might've been a thump. That might've been a catfish thump right there. Trying to loosen the drag a little bit. Dudes, if this is a catfish, this is a pretty good cat on that big old chunk of cut bait. Dude, I think this is a cat right here. Now I'm feeling that roll. Come on, baby. She's right there. Oh, dude, big old cat. That's the biggest one of the day right there. Look at that big old kitty. On that cut, blue cat. Oh my gosh. This is why we brought the bigger net. Bought the bigger net, I should say. Dudes. Dude hammered that thing. Oh, that's a big old mama. That is a big old piggy. Don't know if it's a personal best. That's the biggest one of the day for sure. 
Phew! All right. Come on. Dude, that's a heifer. That's a heifer of a blue cat. I can't even like get it in. There she is. Oh, ho, ho. there is a high adventure piggy right there. Yes. Let's get her over up to the top. Oh my gosh. That blue catfish. Good grief. This thing is a porker. Oh, right in the corner of the mouth. Perfect, perfect hook set. Oh my Lord have mercy. Look at this thing. Oh, oh, well, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, she's about to go over the edge. Shoo. Dude, this thing is a tank. Dude, look at that porker. Look at that big old fish. Oh, 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 oh. You know, every time I come out here and go catfishing, I always look for kind of like that one kicker fish, right? That one big old just chunk. Because usually when I come out catfish, I'm pretty successful. You know, we catch a lot of those 10 pounders or less. I'm always trying to find that one big piggy though. This might be it for the, our day right here. Here we go. Oh my gosh. 21.67 pounds. Whoo! That is a good fish. There you go. Good grief. The way it hit and then she just like took off up river reminded me of how a gar bites where they just, they just start streaking through the water. Nope, just a big old cat, big old blue. That's fun. That was a thrill. That's a big old mama too, I guarantee it. Yeah, you enjoyed that big old piece of blue, didn't you? You good, mama? Here she goes. She gonna be just fine. Oh man, that was fun. That was fun. We're gonna start with our fries. Good grief, I'm spilling them everywhere. Drop them right in. Got oil. Hot. Some more there. Ow! Got the thigh. There we go. All right, time to pull out our catfish. I've been sitting in that uh, beer for a little over two hours now. So that should have soaked up some decent flavor. We're just gonna drain this off. There's some fish down there will get a little taste of Guinness. They want it. Let me just grab some of our strips, dry them off a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take each chunk here and just dunk it in our egg wash, a little egg and milk wash. And then I have some flour with salt, pepper, garlic, and a little bit of baking soda in it just to hopefully add a little crunch to our batter. I'm just gonna dunk these right in here like this. I'm looking at those fries, those are getting close to being done. Drop them right in our bag like that. There we go. Got like six pieces there. Once again, with the Ziploc bag, gonna zip that up. And then we're just gonna toss this in the flour. Easy. And then we're actually gonna turn right around and I'm gonna open my cooler back up. We're gonna keep that in the cooler, sitting and soaking in that flour, just so a lot of good batter can get all mixed up over that. These fries though, look at that. Those fries I think are just about done, actually. I'm gonna pull these off here in just a minute. They feel pretty good against the tongs, as far as I can feel some crunch to them. Just another minute or two and those will come off. That looks good. Right in there. Perfect. We'll hit that with a little salt and pepper. Drop another batch in though first here. Ow, got my thigh again, dang it. Toss that around a bit. All right, y'all check out what I got off of the interweb. Look, we've got your old school basket with the little paper thingy madu that goes inside. I like stumbled across these when I was getting cooking stuff off of Amazon, I think. And I thought to myself, that is epic. I want some. So I got some. And we're just gonna plate up in one of these, just like that, there you go. Got our fries. There you go, look at that. Oh yeah. Man, just salt and pepper, that's all you need with these. Oh, good golden potatoes. Mmm. Mmm. All right, 
I gotta stop. They almost sit here and eat the whole batch. All right, now that's it. We're it. We're done. We're done. All right, one more. One more. Ugh. Okay, we're done. We're done now. Gotta wait for the rest of the food. All right, y'all. Got a fresh batch of fries done. It is time to drop some catfish, I believe. Actually, you know what? Before we drop that in, let's grab a little of this. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Don't want our catfish to get all soggy. Oh, boy. This is exciting. Mm -mm. I can already smell that beer coming off that catfish. Gonna let that bake. Bake. That ain't bacon. That's frying. Let that fry down. And we are one step closer to deliciousness. Check this basket out right there. <laughs> we just made like fish and chips right here on the boat. Let's say a prayer really quickly. Thank the Lord for our day, for this wonderful time out here. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you for keeping me in safety as I'm out here on the water. I pray you continue to keep Stephanie and the kids in safety back at home. I just thank you for this life that we live, the good health that we have to live it. And may you bless this food to our bodies now. Through Jesus we pray, amen. All right, y'all have to admire that for just a second. I mean, we got it down even to the checkered little napkin that it sits in. I got this idea actually from uh, an Irish pub that I ate at recently. They had a beer battered, I think it was just cod, and it was delicious. And that's where I got the idea for the uh, Guinness, using the Guinness beer, because that's what they battered their fish in. And it tasted amazing. Let's grab a piece. There you go. I can smell that Guinness still. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know how catfish typically has like, it's pretty fishy flavored, right? So I always fry my catfish. However, I have to say, I mean, I know we fried it this time as well, but that beer, I mean, it's got such a strong beer flavor to it. I mean, look at that. Beautiful white meat. I'm getting none of that, that fishy flavor that you typically get from catfish. Mm, just a delicious beer aroma. This is delicious, y'all. Beer battered catfish. I don't even know, is that technically battered? Because I didn't put beer in the batter. I just soaked it in beer. Meal fit for a king. I am the king. I'm the king of the high adventures out here. Well, guys, I've tried one last spot here, but it looks like we're probably going to have to end the day on that almost 22 pounder, which honestly, that's not the worst way to end a day. The Phalange King demands that you go try soaking some catfish in some beer. I'm telling you right now, you're going to love it. Thank y'all for hanging out with me today, and I will see you in the next one.